I hope you enjoy the, uh, the work in this exhibit. I know most people tend to think of me as a poet. Um, but I was a visual artist before I started writing seriously. And I think where I'm now is trying to find a way to merge both text and, and images into the same space uh, that ultimately I think is about making film. Uh, I'm not quite there yet in a, in a serious way. I've been playing around with film for years, but right now I'm transitioning into a, more time with my visual art. And so what you will see in this exhibit are um, my attempts to, to reduce uh, narrative and, and larger story elements uh, that deal with really traumatic history for some people, uh, American history specifically. Uh, behind me is a piece that I think from a distance, you know, the first thing you may see is a, a clipboard uh, and offensive, an offensive play for maybe basketball. But if you spend time with the piece and, and, and really look at the details, what it is is a commentary on, on enslavement uh, and the Underground Railroad and, and runaway slaves. Uh, you know, the green figures are all instructed and diagrammed to head north, and north is indicated by the, uh, the blue line, which is the Ohio River, and with Ohio north of the river, you know, as, as we know historically that if you could make it across that river, you, you, you were free, uh, you were into freedom. Although, uh, once they passed the Fugitive Slave Act, as represented by the black and white X, which is the defense, um, you know, it was then legal to come across into free territory and, and arrest enslaved, formerly enslaved individuals and return them to slavery. Uh, a very egregious thing, it, it makes it easy to think about you know, how law and institutional uh, racism really began to exist uh, when the very laws of the land were built into to disenfranchisement of people of color. I think that if you look even closer there, are things written on the red X's, which represent more detail about the horrors that enslaved people had to go through. Uh, what I like about this particular way of telling the story is that from a distance, it looks pretty benign, uh, but the more time you spend with it, you find out how serious a topic that is taken on. Um, and I think if you saw the trauma from a distance, you might not approach it. A lot of people like to avoid having those real conversations. Uh, so I kind of trick people into coming closer and engaging the work, hopefully, and then thinking um, long and hard about what it really means. And, um, in this particular case, you know, there's a larger meeting that just deals with sports and race in general. Uh, that's another larger topic that I, I deal with in, in subtle and, and sometimes not so subtle ways. But this, this piece is called Give the Ball to Harriet. With all the power of Harriet Tubman uh, imbued in the piece. And I think if you read the title, it might help you get closer to the meaning Without the title, you don't get all of the meaning, and which for me is great because it shows you how important the text is or how important poetry is compared to just the text and the images. Uh, what you probably can't see from this vantage point is that around the edges of this canvas is part of the poem uh, that's called Reserved Seating, and it's a commentary on what it felt like to be at a UK basketball game and how the people who who were sitting in the role that I came to occupy, uh, their response to my being there, they seemed to feel like I should not have been there because the seat was such a great seat. And so I won't spoil it for you. Hopefully you would come closer, uh, take a visit and read the excerpt, or maybe even find a copy of that whole poem, um, which might also be available online through the center. We can make that available for you, I'm sure. But this is, Give the ball to Harriet.